Okay, I, I guess we'll get started now. Uh, once again, my name is Dave Manel. I'm Director of Product Development here at Accountants World. Um, today's webinar is going to be on uh, doing client bookkeeping and uh, CAS for clients, the sales side, recording sales and, and different features that we have in the sales, uh, sales module. There's a lot of little things that we have there, and I think many of them people are not aware of. So hopefully when we're done with this, uh, you will have learned a few things that can really help you out. Thank you. Let's go. Okay, first thing is a lot of what I'm going to be showing is uh, how to do invoicing. So you just go to the sales, uh, sales tab on the menu and from the sales tab, you'd so select invoice and you just start typing in the name of, uh, of the customer. So I started typing in Y-E-L-L -L, and it came up with Yellowstone Backcountry. And so it makes it very easy to pull up the, uh, the customer you want to be entering the information for. So once I pulled up the, the invoice, as you can see, there's a lot of different features we have here in the, in the invoicing. And I'm going to touch on most of them. Uh, some are, are not so important. Some are, are more important. Some things can really save you a lot of time and effort. So the first thing I'm going to kind of go from top to bottom. First thing I want to point out is change address. You happen to come in here, you're working on an invoice, and you see that the uh, the address is not correct. So instead of having to go back all the way to the customer screen to, to update it, you can just click on the change address link. Uh, a little uh, pop-up will come, and you can change the information. So I changed it to be... Uh, 1010 West Yellowstone Pathway, it was entered incorrectly. And one point I want to stress with you is this is not a temporary change. This is a permanent change in the address. So once you change it there, it changes it back on the customer screen. So here you can see uh, 1010 West Yellowstone Pathway is here. One other thing I want to stress is also if you have a customer with the shipping address is different, we do have that in the customer screen. Okay, terms. Uh, accounting Power has a lot of different terms built in. Right now for this client, I have net 30 set and you can see that due date defaulted to 30 days later. And if you want to change a term, you would just click on the drop down and change it. Or if you wanted to select a different term that we don't have, you would be able to um, set up a custom term, which is what I'm going to show you how to do. In order to set, a, set up a custom term, you would go to sales preferences. First, these are the ones that we have that are there. We have seven different different ones. And basically what they do is they set the due date when you're entering the invoice. We do not calculate any discounts based upon uh, an early uh, an early payment by one of the customers. <coughs> Sorry. So in this case, I wanted to set up a new one. So I set up one called uh, Net45. That was the name. And then I also made it that it would be after 45 days. So then once I came back here, I selected net 45 from the list. I put it in. And as you can see, the, um, the due date has updated appropriately to the um, 45 days later from the, the point. Uh, the next thing I want to get into is um, departments, how you can use departments in, uh, in the invoicing. So in this case, I have uh, two different departments set up, the Sierra Nevada Department and the Rocky Mountain Department. Um, they're set up by going to company, company setup screen. 
and I'm not really going into right now how you go in, how you set them up, but uh, once they're set up, there's a few different things that it can do with the uh, with sales invoice. The first thing is you can set up in the customer screen a default for a particular customer. So anytime I use Yellowstone Backcountry, I know it's the uh, the default department is Rocky Mountains, and it should always use that department for them. Um, not that I'm going into vendors at this point, but we also have a, a similar spot in vendors. So when you have a vendor, you can select the default department. So what this means is anytime I pull, I go to do an invoice for Yellowstone Backcountry, this will default to Rocky Mountains here. And each and every line that I enter here, that I put in um, a product service or, or other information, will default to Rocky Mountains. If for some reason you wanted to them to change on this particular invoice, you could come in to the drop down here. And even though Yellowstone defaults to Rocky Mountains, I could select one of the other um, one of the other departments. So once you, I'm not really going too much yet into uh, entering products and descriptions, but what I'm showing here is a drop down of the various products that this company has set up, gadgets, gizmos, and widgets. And is once you select one, it fills in all this information based upon defaults you've set up. And the other point I wanted to make is it defaults to Rocky Mountain, but if you want one particular product to be with a different department, you could also go in there and change that department. Now these are the things that came automatically from the product setup. There's a quantity, a unit price, and also the default sales account will come there. For some reason, I didn't put an arrow here by taxable, but that also comes automatically. So these come from this screen, which is the setup product screen. So we can see that uh, I set up a project product for gadgets and default quantity is 10, the unit price is 1,000, it's taxable, and also this is what the revenue account was for it. Um, just let me mention one thing because I see there's a couple of questions. I will look at questions at the end of the um, of the webinar, and um, please ask any questions that that you want. And also, if you don't have one while we're doing it, you can contact me at dmunell d m u n n e l l at accountantsworld.com. And my phone number is 631-415-9255. I'm sorry, 415-9252. Okay, anyway, let, let me get back here. The next thing I want to show is uh, deleting and inserting. Now, deleting a line from a, from an invoice that's been filled out is pretty straightforward. You just come over here, you just click on the X, and it deletes it. And the insert is also very easy to use. And the main thing for the insert is for how you want things to appear when you're doing an invoice. So if you had finished entering all these products and you wanted one product to be the second or one one entry to be the second one, you could insert, and then there'd be a blank line for you there. <coughs> I'm sorry. So here I'm going to go ahead. I click on clicked on insert. It opened up a line. And in my case, I didn't want to add another uh, product or service. We have four different things we can use here. 
We can enter product service, you can enter expenses, you can also enter other, and you can enter a comment. Other is mainly used when you don't have products and services set up, and in my case, I'm gonna do a comment here. So I selected a comment, I entered it in here. There, there's no amounts related to it. And what this really does is now it makes it when I go ahead and print out the invoice, we'll see that that uh, comment has been uh, inserted there on the invoice. In this case, it's the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Anyone who ever learned how to type long ago maybe remembers that. That's a, a little saying that has all letters in the alphabet in it. Okay, next thing I wanna show is templates. Now templates are something that can really save you if you're doing the work for your clients or your clients a lot of time if they have certain groups that they put together and they're selling the same group of products or services over and over again. So in this case, I've already set up that I have gadgets, gizmos, widgets, and uh, I'm gonna do it once for this client, but now I know I'm gonna use this same one over and over again. And while in my case, I only have uh, three items, if you have an invoice with 10, with 10 or 20 items, it can really be a, be a time saver to not have to enter it again. So what you do is you click on uh, create template, and a little thing will pop up for you. It's gonna ask, ask you for the name of the template. You enter the name, and then you just save it. You also have the ability to go into um, under sales list and view the templates. And from that screen, you can go in and view all the templates that you have, and you would be able to edit any of them that you wanted to. So the, the other screen is certainly the easiest way to initially set them up, but this is a good way to um, edit them going forward. So now when I'm doing a, a new invoice, this is for a different client, Buena Vista Kayak, instead of me having to enter all the information, all I did was click on the template dropdown. It would list all the templates that I have. And in this case, I just have the one, but I select it. And then once I select it, the invoice is filled out and ready for you to go. So that, that can really save a lot of time. Um, this can also be used, I'm gonna to touch on recurring invoices and recurring invoices, we allow you to set them up on various uh, periods of time. But if you have an invoice for a particular client that you know is gonna be recurring, I mean, for a particular customer, you know that it's gonna be recurring, but you don't really know when, you can set up the template for it and then just uh, do it like this whenever you need to, to do it again for that client. Okay, miscellaneous info. Uh, what I wanna show first is this field sales representative. This is very good for um, clients that have um, uh, sales staff and you wanna keep track of uh, the various sales. And so you can know how much this particular client's um, uh, salesperson sold. You can know which products they sold. There's a few different reports that you can get out for them. So in this case, it's David Molendor. And so the first question is, well, how do I set up a sales representative to use? And there's a couple of different places you can do it. One would be under company payroll employee setup. So any employees you have set up, you can then also set them up as a sales representative. Another way you can do it is if it's a vendor, usually it would be, maybe it's a salesperson on a 1099 or something. And what you do is you go into the vendor 
and you enter the information as sales representative. So that's how you set up the various sales representatives. The next step would be to set up a particular customer and which uh, representative is for that customer. So in this case, I said I go to Buena Vista Kayak and I say that I want Dave Molendor to be the sales representative for that one. So anytime there's a, a sale made to Buena Vista Kayak, it'll automatically be reported towards that person. Uh, let me show how it can be used in the sales report. A couple of other things to mention before I show this report. You can also use a sales report to see sales by customer, to see sales by product and services. You can sort it by amount and you can have a summary instead of a detail. On the one I'm gonna show, it's gonna be a detail. And I just print it out and you can see everything that for this period that I selected for the third quarter of the year, all the sales that were made by Dave Molendor. It'll list uh, each individual invoice, what the products were, um, it'll have a total for them, and then it would have all the other salespeople, of course, going down. Some other items in miscellaneous information are the three additional um, miscellaneous items that we allow you to set up. And how you do that is you go to sales preferences and there'll be three custom entries. So in this case, I have one that's called discount code. I have another one that's called just any information. It's just whatever, you, they're all exactly what you would want to put into them. And what these things do mainly is they print on the invoice. Uh, in one particular case, a client needed to um, to have the truck number that, that would be delivering the invoice, the uh, product. So it, there's many different things that it can be uh, that it can be used for. So anyway, once I come in here, I enter these custom entries. Now, when I'm on an invoice, I'm going to see whatever I had entered here. So I'm going to see discount code, uh, the, any information, and also the special. And if I print out the invoice, it'll print out that information on them. Um, since I have something here called discount code, it's probably a, um, a good thing for me to now show you how you can also use discounts on an invoice. So we have two different methods for uh, discounting. you can either use a percentage method or a flat dollar amount. So on this line for the gadgets, I had chosen the dollar sign and I entered discount of 1000. So that meant there'll be a thousand dollar discount off of the total sales. On this line, gizmos, I left it as a default, which is percentage and I put five here. You put the percentage as a whole number. So I put five, which will be 5%. So basically what that does, just to show how it will come down here, there'll be $1,000 plus the um, plus the percentage, which would be the, uh, the $50. So it's 1,050. And then this is just to show how it how it shows on the invoice. You see the 1050 here. You see the discount code was May special. The only one that printed here, the others, other any information in special didn't print because I didn't I didn't use them on this invoice. Okay, next thing I want to go into is uh, setting up sales tax. Now setting up sales tax can be, uh, you have to make sure you do the proper steps in order to get the sales tax to work. The first thing is 
you have to say that as a company, you want to be, uh, you want them to be collecting sales tax. So you go into sales preferences for that company and you select the sales tax button. The next step is you, first of all, you select the sales tax payable account, the default, and then you select the state, you select the county if, if it's appropriate for that state, and you also enter the tax rate. And what this does now, any new customers that I open up for this client will automatically default to um, California, Tulare County, 8.5%. So when I open up a new, uh, a new one, Arches Park Tours, it was automatically defaulting to Tulare, and it also had the other information there. But if this customer should have a different county, you can select that county and also enter the different rate. And you could also select a different state and a different county. I didn't show it back on the other screen, but you can also make it that a customer even though it defaults to um, those things, you can make it that that particular customer is not subject to sales tax. So maybe uh, your your client's doing business with a nonprofit or or with a reseller or something. So in that case, they don't want to select the sales tax. You also have the ability on the product list screen to uh, choose whether or not you want to be uh, you want it to be taxable. So there's three different places. First, you have to have it set up that it's the company as a whole. Then on the particular customer, you have to state, or actually what you have to do is just leave it alone as long as you want, want the default, but then you can remove it. And same thing with the products. You have to, when you set up a product, indicate that it is a taxable product. So in this case, on gizmos, I check taxable, and I could also uncheck it. Now, when it comes time to make a sales tax payment, there's a couple of different things you can do. Uh, in my case, I'm looking to see what the uh, the sales tax amount was for for the for the quarter for this customer. So I entered the dates for the fourth quarter. Um, I can select whichever state I had set up. On this client, I had two states set up. The program will, will go through all of the various invoices in that period, and it'll show the amount that was collected. If any amount was paid before, it would show it. And then it comes up with the payment amount. And then you have a couple of options for making the payment. You can either record it if it was done out separately from writing the check in the system, or you can approve the payment, and then the next step would be to go into banking checking, to banking and making the payments. But I'm not gonna go into that screen right here, because that's really a, writing checks is a different feature from what I wanna show today. But you could either record the payments or approve the payments, and you could also see a list of all the recent payments. <clears throat> you need to set up in order to do these who the um, sales tax agency is. And so, of course, that brings up the question, well, how do I set that up? And what you do is you go to the vendor setup, you find the vendor or set up a brand new vendor if it's the first time. In this case, it's the California Board of Equalization. Enter the address. Of course, I just made up that address. And then you'll um, come over here where it says sales tax agent, and you make sure that you um, you select that. That way, when the checks are written, you're able to specify who who the check should be going to. And you also should enter the default uh, account for this for the payables.
Uh, the final thing I want to show in this is the sales tax report. Now the sales tax report, we have a few different things. You can choose the date, you can choose which state, you can choose accrual or cash. There are a few states where you have the option and there might even be one or two states where actually it has to be cash basis. Uh, where we are in New York, it's accrual basis. And then you can choose summary or detail print out the report, and it gives uh, various information. Um, a lot of states require you to enter the uh, gross sales in, instead of just the taxable sales, so it has that here. If I had used a lot of different counties, it would have the total sales for each county and the total amount that was um, that was due for each county and then you could use that to, for sales tax reports. Recurring invoices. Recurring invoices can be a very powerful feature if you're using, um, if you're using a client maybe who does uh, like a landscaping business, some sort of service business where they, they're sending out the same invoice each month to their clients or each quarter to the clients. Once you set up that invoice, every period, every um, month, quarter, whatever you put down as a frequency, that invoice will be recurred. And also, if you set up the client, which I'm going to touch on later, with the ability to receive payments from uh, credit cards or digital checks, then sending the invoices out is very easy. You can just go and email them all out in a batch to the clients, I mean, to the customers for your clients. And then when the person pays by credit card or by digital check, you don't have to record anything because it's automatically done when, when they make the payment. So that can really, with a customer with, with 100, 200, uh, recurring invoices that can really save a lot of time and effort and make it that there's very little work extra that you need to be doing. So anyway, what what are the features for, for the recurring invoices? First, you have to click on make this invoice recurring. When you click on that, pulls up a little uh, a little window. You have to specify that it is a recurring invoice. Again, you enter a name. And then you select the interval, and these are the ones we have. It can be monthly, every other month, quarterly, three times a year, twice a year, or once a year. And as I mentioned before, maybe you, if a customer, if one of your clients has a customer that they send an invoice out every other week or on a, a not on a scheduled basis by setting up the uh, template, you would be able to do a lot of this pretty automatically. The next thing is you select what day. So maybe you would select uh, the 10th day of the month the invoices go out, or the invoices are four. And you also select how many days in advance the invoice goes out, and you select the starting date. So if I were to um, enter a date of um, July 1st, it's not going to start doing the, the recurring invoices until July 1st. And then you can also enter an ending date. So if you want to stop it at a certain time, you can. If you leave the ending date uh, blank, they'll just recur indefinitely. Now, one thing that I think a lot of people are not aware of, which can really save time, is um, this feature here. It says recurring in invoices. They reflect the unit price specified on the setup product screen for each invoice. If you change the price on the setup screen, subsequent recurring invoices will reflect the new price. So what this can really mean for um, you as the accountant or for your clients if they're doing the work is it makes it a lot easier to make changes. So in this case, here's this company, Mammoth Mountain Plowing, and we see that they have uh, 
a unit price for plowing out long driveways and a unit price for plowing out short driveways. And this is a recurring bill that they're giving to all of their various clients. But if they decided to change from $250 to $300 for the long driveways, all you would need to do is come in here, change the unit price from 250 to 300, and then going forward, all new recurring invoices would reflect that new price. So this could really make uh, a big savings of time on uh, entering the invoices. This is good in this type of business. It's good in a um, apartment type business. If uh, they're renting out all the apartments and the price went up, it, it's very easy to change the uh, the prices for the various uh, items. And then going forward, all the new invoices would uh, reflect the change. So I, I think that's a very powerful feature that a lot of people aren't using, and I think it's because they're not aware that we have it. And the final thing about the recurring invoices is if you go into the sales list, you can view all of the recurred invoices. You can choose to delete some. So let's say if I have one that I stopped, I'm not using it anymore, I can delete it. You can see when the last time an invoice was made for that, uh, for that customer. You can see the amount. You can see when the next invoice is scheduled. But on this screen, you can't edit the invoices. You can only delete an invoice and see the information for them. OK, the next thing I want to go into is um, receiving payments. There's a lot of different ways and different things you can do for receiving payments. And the first one I want to mention is when an invoice is emailed to a client, then the, the, um, the person who receives the invoice has the ability, as long as the, your client has been set up with either digital checks or with a merchant account, they have the ability to receive the payment by credit card or digital check. This is what I mentioned before. And getting customers to do this can save a lot of time and work. And also, the easier it is for a customer to make a payment, the less uh, outstanding receivables there will be. A, a lot of people maybe don't pay because they don't have the money or something, but a lot of people don't pay because, especially with smaller businesses, it's just they don't get around to doing it. So this can really cut down on the receivables. So in this case, uh, the email goes out, Brontosaurus tree topping. When they receive it, they can click on this, and then screens will open up for them to uh, make the payment, which is something I'm not going to go into in this webinar. But there will be another webinar showing how to set up digital checks, also how to register for, for a merchant account. And the digital checks, is a very inexpensive way to for your clients to be able to receive payments whereas a credit card is convenient but there is a uh, a 2.8 percent uh, typical which is a typical merchant fee and the, the way you do set them up is you go to company bank add-ons digital checks and also merchant account So that's if if the payments are received electronically, that cuts down on the work that I'm going to show you now. But this is also lots of times people send checks or something, and this is how you would record the uh, the invoices. So I pulled up Yellow ba Yellowstone Backcountry. A customer has sent in a uh, a check for $120,000, and the way the system works is once you enter 
the amount of the invoice will go in and we automatically do the oldest invoice first going forward and then we until finally the payment is completely used up so in this case it paid the 22,000 the 43,000 43,000 and then 11,000 leaving a new balance on this other invoice it's still outstanding sometimes maybe there might be a dispute about an older invoice or for whatever reason you want to um, record the payment as applying towards a different one and what you do for that is after you've entered the information here the amount you just um, come in and enter the amounts that you want. So in this case, I put 43,400, 43,400, because I didn't want to pay the, the oldest one, but uh, I did want to record the next two as being paid. And I also want to record a portion of this one, but I accidentally put in the wrong number, 400,000. And the point of this is just to show you that we will give a message if, if it's incorrectly entered. <clears throat> the next way to to receive a payment is when you're actually on an invoice. Actually, let me go back. I did want to show one other thing here. If if you wanted to either enter a write off or if somebody had paid early, you would click on the write off and then the other thing would say discount and then you would enter the amount here. So um, if somebody's getting a discount for, for paying early, or if you have a write-off because it's uh, uncollectible, or for whatever reason, you would enter it here. I, sorry, I skipped by that one before. Okay, another way that you can receive a payment is uh, you go right to the invoice, and there's a little button here when you're on the invoice that you can receive the payment. You click on that, it'll bring up a little pop-up window, and then you can enter how the payment was received, the payment date, record a reference number or a check number, and also which account you want it to go to. Anywhere in the system where you see these little stars like this, that means that it's a, a required field. So if you don't enter these two fields, you, won't, you wouldn't be able to save the information. That's why this OK down here is uh, dimmed out for me at this point. So that's something good to remember anywhere in the program. Another thing, whenever you're using the program, you're not sure of a line and we have a, a little eye next to it. If you hover over the eye, a little short information snippet will come up for you. Okay, one other thing that you can do um, for receiving the payments. This is if you want to be doing, it's kind of like the counterpart to um, the bill payment service that you can offer for your client. When you're doing a invoice payment or recording invoice payments for your clients, the client after he receives a check from a customer, he can then take a picture of that image and then he can upload it into the system. And then when you come into banking, cash receipts, it'll say there's one unprocessed receipt here for you, or if there were 10 or whatever number there might be. You'll, and you'll see the name of the, of the invoice. When you click on it, it'll default to the right, right uh, customer. You'll be able to see an invoice to make the entry from, and then you can enter the information. The uh, good point about this is at any late, later time, you always have that document attached to this payment. So you can always go back and look at it. Customizing invoices. Um, 
there's a lot of different features we have for customizing invoices, and we also have a few different uh, invoice formats. So the first thing is you, you do is when you come in, you have to click on the customize the information to appear on your invoice. If you don't click on that box, it doesn't allow you to do anything, and that's to make it so you don't accidentally just access the screen and, and change something without really intending to. So we have the four different types, standard, professional, contemporary, and modern. They're just names that we gave to them. But you can go into the system and you can do the preview and you can see what the various ones will look like. There's also the ability to, um, to enter to say, I want the row lines, I want the column separator, I want to have a border for the shipping address. If you want to show a title, if you want to show a company name, company address, and you also have the ability to have the company logo on the bill. So while I'm not going into everything that you could do here, there's a lot of different things you could do in order to um, make the invoices look nicer or to customize to what your client prefers. If you happen to be in here and you're doing a lot of work and then you don't like what you did, but you want to start over fresh, you can click on restore default. And you also have the ability once you've done it to uh, see a preview of what it will look like. Okay, the next thing I want to show is the customer center. Customer center has a, a few different features in it, and it's information about all of your customers in one spot. So the first thing is the customer list. Uh, a few things that are good for this, let's say you want to make sure sales tax is entered properly for all of your customers. You could come here, you could sort by, um, by the sales tax column, and then you would see the ones that were still blank. They might be blank because it's a non-taxable, but this will help you so that you'll know who you've done or not done. If they're sales representatives, same thing. You can click on the sort, and you could sort it and see if there were some that weren't entered. You can also see the balance due for each customer from this screen. The next thing I want to show is uh, customer transactions. Customer transactions give all of the transactions for a particular customer on the one screen. You have the ability to drill down to the individual invoices from here. You can choose which period. You could also choose which type. And a lot of the screens in our system that look like this, we call it a grid. Almost every screen that is a grid in our system, you have the ability to also send it to Excel. So almost all these screens have the ability to sort them, and they also have the ability to send them to Excel. I don't know if it would be that important for this particular one, but you could. You might want to send it to Excel, see how much was widgets, maybe do a a pivot table or something, and I'll do those various six fun Excel things to do. Customer statement. Customer statement is, is the one thing you can do from the customer center that can actually be emailed out to the clients. So you can come to the customer statement, you can select the period, you have the ability to see a list with only the customers with activities. You can choose all the customers, and you can also choose to see customers with a balance. And let's say in this case, I chose customers with activity. I could come here and select all of them by clicking on this box. Then I would click on email, and that's how easy it would be uh, able to send a, a customer statement to all the customers who had activity in that period.
you also have the ability to archive it into the uh, cloud cabinet from there or to print them out and send them. The final thing is uh, the refund checks. So if you need to issue a refund check for one of your customers or one of your clients needs to issue a refund check to a customer, they come into this screen, they select which customer they want it to be for. They can only do it if there's an open credit. And when they go to enter the amount to be refunded, this can't be more than the open credit amount. And then once that's done, you have the ability to either record it if it was already done manually, the, the check, or if you do the, re, the refund uh, electronically, or you can also approve the refund and then there'll be a check to, to print over here in banking. Okay, I'm almost to the end of what I'm going to be showing. And now I'm gonna show a couple of the different sales reports that we have. Uh, we, we have a, a wide variety of reports. Most reports also have various ways to um, sort them and summary detail and things like that. So it really increases the amount of different reports you can get. So the first one I wanted to show is just a customer receipts. So you select which customer, you select the, the date range. In my case, I did it for the first quarter. And you can see all the money that was received from that customer during that time frame, which I chose the first quarter. You can see the reference number. It might be a check number, it might be a ACH, of course, a real ACH instead of what I'm setting up here for pretend would be a longer number, but we allow the long, long entries there. And so it makes it easy to keep track of uh, the various payments received from diff different customers. Accounts receivable aging. This is like a mainstay for all accountants. Um, not too much to say about it. I mean, it's just the standard accounts receivable receivable aging. You can choose to have it based upon either the invoice date or to have it based upon the due date. And you can choose here, I have the details. So you have each individual one done showing each invoice with the invoice number. And you could also choose to have uh, a summary. So you would just see for Big Dance Machinery, it would show the 86,000 and it would have the various columns. A new report we came up with is the past due invoice report. And this is a way to get a list of all the invoices that are past due. And um, you can choose uh, if you want to have it as uh, various formats also to display. Okay, so that, that was the things that I wanted to, to show there. There's a few things I want to just reiterate about them. A few different things that can really be helpful um, in offering maybe client accounting services for your clients or for having your clients to do it themselves. Of course, the recurring invoices can be a real time saver. The idea of being able to change the amount on the recurring invoices for all of the all of the customers that have the particular product is, is a real time saver. The being able to receive payments in either a digital check or by a, a merchant account is also another very important time saver. And I have noticed it's not really used as much as I would have thought it would, especially the di digital checks. Digital checks are pretty inexpensive and um, it can really be a time saver. And checks are becoming a thing of the past, I think. But
So let's see if there's a, a couple of questions here that I can answer well at this point. One is, why doesn't my client have an add button on this invoice screen? I, I think I would have to talk to you separately to, to try to figure out why it wouldn't be showing. Just one second, let's... I'm going into the program here. Let's see if I can, at a glance, come up with a reason as to why they wouldn't have it. And you're saying they only have recent invoices, credit memo, and estimate. Okay, the, the point is, in order to, to add a new invoice, you enter the name first of who the invoice is to. So as soon as I start typing in something, it'll come up with it and that pulls up a new invoice. Uh, if you change the sales representative for a customer, this only changes new invoices for that customer. And yes, that's true. It will only change the new invoices. Uh, how to report, record customer deposit and repayment to customer. Uh, the repayment is kind of like what I showed with the um, with the refund, the refund check. I guess I can't really show you well on, on this screen how to do the deposit. I, I will send you a, an email with the answer on how to do it, okay? Uh, you don't see recurring invoices under the sales tab. The way to see the recurring invoices is you go to the invoice list. And from the invoice list, you will see the recurring uh, invoices. So it's, you go to invo sales invoice list, and from there you will see them. Um, does the write-up or discount autom is it automatically calculated based upon the terms? No, it is not. You have to, um, to enter it when you're recording the payment. And maybe one or two more questions here. Uh, will we get a recording of this call? You're, you won't get a recording of the call, but the call will be here, or, or the webinar will be here. If you go to resources, webinars, it'll be in here and it'll probably be up in about a, a day. Usually I have them up by the next day, but just in case I run into some problem trying to do it, I'm saying a day or two. So how do we upload the payment document that, so that it shows up there's two things. I really can't go into the real de details, but um, the main thing that you do to upload the payment is when your client has a phone, you send them, well, let's see what I can show you real quick. If you go to client center,
So what, what you do to get your clients to do it, you go to Client Center, Bill Payment Services, you select which clients you want to have it for, then you click on email, and we have two different emails here, and you choose the one to invitation to use mobile upload feature. And there'll be a link in there, and they click on the link, and then they can save that link as a, as a favorite. And from that, then, they'll be able to take a picture of, the, of a document, and it can be the sales, uh, you know, the payment for sales, and it can also be for bills for you to be paying, in fact, for your clients, for a bill payment service. That's the main thing we do it for. And we are in the process of changing this so there will be an app for it, although I don't have a, uh, a date for, the, um, for when it will be finished or when it will be released. Um, there's a question, can you set up more than one sales tax percentage for the same location depending upon the service or product sold? Um, no, you can't. You cannot set up uh, various uh, rates for, for the same location. Okay. Um, one other thing before I sign off, uh, there'll be another webinar in about uh, um, three or four weeks. I, I don't have the date scheduled for sure, but we're in the process of changing the look and feel of the uh, of the programs. So the the menu structure and stuff like that, not really changing too much as far as uh, as features. And that's what's going to be on that webinar. And I feel it'd be very important for you to see it in advance of uh, of the release. And as I mentioned before, any comments or anything, I really like receiving uh, comments, both good and bad, about the program, about suggestions or anything. Well, I can't say I like receiving the bad ones, but it's good for us to receive anything that might be negative also. And my email address is d-m-u-n-n-e-l-l at accountantsworld.com and my phone number is 631-415-9252. And when is the pre-release sem seminar? Uh, I'll be sent, there'll be an email going out before. I'm thinking it'll be about three weeks from now. And it's DMU, just once again, it's DMU, let, let me write it down here so you guys can see it. It's D-M-U-N-N-E-L-L, -L, and my phone number is 631-415-9252. And that, that is the right number, 631-415-9252. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I appreciate the time you gave me. I hope, uh, I hope you've learned some good stuff about the program. And, and I look forward to uh, hearing from you. Thank you. Goodbye.